Well, I wanted to talk about uh, my favorite cold weather gear and really I, I want you to look at this as the pieces that I'm using. These are pieces that I've been using for 30 years, uh, pretty consistent with the type of clothing. Now, you know, you're using First Light right now and this isn't necessarily telling you to go out and buy First Light. The point is that it's real high quality clothing, whether you're using First Light. You know, I really dressed about this same and that was all the way back in 1994. I got a really fancy outfit from Cabela's for Christmas from in-laws and um, they had Dinsulate, Gore-Tex, fleece. It was pretty cool. It was top of the line back then and it was cool. It lasted for, boy, a good 25 years before I handed it down and gave it away. So um, it's uh, when you buy quality clothes, they last for a long time. But we're just coming off the hill behind me and we had a really cold morning sit. And so I thought what better time to uh, make a actual cold weather gear video. You know, I grew up in Michigan, hunted the UP of Michigan and uh, Pennsylvania, and of course out here in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and it's really, uh, really cold. You know, we hunt some brutal temperatures, sitting up in tree stands up on the top of this hill. We got a lot of wind in our face. I can remember some really cold UP of Michigan sits too. And uh, sits where you start at minus 10, minus 15, and it warms up to plus five and when you're out in the woods. So some really cold times. So over the th last 35 years, I've gone from hardly having any clothes to then getting into the 90s where I had some decent layers and good coats. And, uh, and you learn to dress along the way. And, uh, and you look back and think, man, how did I even survive? And so we were just up top. Uh, yesterday morning it was a high it was 67 degrees in the morning uh, today it's about 30 I think it was 23 Dylan 24 on the way over there here this morning I think it got up to 28 so we're still right around that 30 mark and with up to 25 mile an hour winds so you can imagine sitting up on that hill up there we were both in tree stands this morning um, it was cold it was uh, really cold and so I feel like we survived and we were comfortable and I'm just going to go through really quick some of the layers that uh, really helped us out this morning. Now, first off, head. You can see on my side right here, I have a heavy, heavy face mask. And this is really cr critical. It's called a Tundra uh, from First Light. But regardless of what kind you buy, I have this heavy face mask. It's virtually windproof, heavy fleece on the inside, more of a merino wool polyester on the outside. And that keeps the wind off my face. But then at the same time, I put that face mask on and I'm still using a stocking cap on top of that. And I still worked in my, my hat, so I have a visor. That's really critical. A lot of people forget about that visor. And then all of a sudden you're facing east and I've literally had to roll up my, my stocking cap to try to make a brim because I couldn't see to the east in the woods when that sun was coming up. So working in a brim is really important into the whole combination of things, but I'm always using that face mask, heavy face mask, and then a stocking cap like that. And then I'm using something with a neck. I like the neck to come up under my chin, something that will zip up with that jacket so that I can tuck that face mask in and I'm very, very warm. That way my neck is still a little bit free for movement. I'm not being choked out, but then at the same time, very warm. Now my outer layers here, I've worn bibs since the early 90s. Since all the way back to that fancy Cabela suit way back in the day. Those bibs are critical to me because they keep your core warm and you, I can't overemphasize that enough to have that core warm. You're not getting any draft around pants and coat, even pants and then a parka. You still get a draft around that waistline and that can ruin the, the heat that you have in your core, trapped in your core and that's a really bad thing. And I'm wearing a jacket. This jacket goes straight down to here. It's not bound here, right here. It can actually freely ride around the waist. I can tighten it if I want. It's really critical. Both these jackets heavily insulated. These are the Solitude. It's more of a mid-weight jacket from First Light. They have the Sanctuary series. It's even for warmer uh, conditions, really colder, but other uh, warmer clothing. Both of those sets have uh, some type of windproofing in. So it's not allowing the wind to cut through, and that's really critical too. So I'm, fine. I'm glad that First Light finally did that over the last couple years to get that uh, windproofing in there so windproof jacket windproof bibs and then underneath i have i'm always wearing some type of vest and so i have a vest on and it happens to be a little bit quilted and then i have the heavyweight furnace quarter zip long john then i have a midweight long sleeve t-shirt and then i have a lightweight t-shirt all in merino wool all three of those layers 
and then I have that heavyweight long john down here in the bottom. So the long john layers, windproofing, good insulation, and uh, this jacket and the bibs, and that's and then with your head, you know, that right there does really well. I also have this hand warmer tube. A lot of you have heard me say in the past, my first hand warmer tube, I couldn't buy, couldn't afford to buy one of those nice ones from Dunham Sports back in Waterford in the mid 80s. So my mom got some uh, layers of wool and she sewed them together, gave me a big safety pin and I just wore it on the front of my jacket because I wanted to have that hand warmer tube keep my hands warm. I don't know if you guys remember, I think it was uh, sort of like a Johnson, Johnson or something, but it was a heater that you could actually have them pour fuel into. It was in a red velvet bag. I had one of those back in the, back in the day. Now I just use these, these hand warmers. These hand warmers are excellent in here. So I'm uh, using a hand warmer. I have two in here this morning, these last about 24 hours. Over the years, I've used all different kinds. These are heat factory, not sponsored by them or anything. They just seem to last the longest out of the ones I've had. These will be warm still tomorrow morning. So I use a hand warmer in there. I use light gloves, sometimes heavy gloves to get into the stand, but then I'm wearing light gloves because I want to be able to shoot my bow easily, shoot my gun, and then uh, and then I have actually have my cell phone in this uh, hand warmer tube. So my hand warmer, sometimes I have SD cards, batteries, cell phone. I actually have my grunt call in here. I have a doe bleat. I carry that this time of year during the rut. So that hand warmer tube is critical. Head, hands, and feet. So let's get to feet. Feet now. My feet, I'm wearing the warmest boots that Lacrosse makes. It's a 16 gram, 1600 gram Thinsulate Alpha Burleys. They're knee boots. I love those, but I'm diabetic. I have a little bit of neuropathy in my feet. And what that means is my feet are a little bit numb. I don't get the circulation that I need down there. And I need a little extra warmth. So you can bet that whether it's my head, my feet, my fingers, I'm trying to do my best to stay warm. Now with my feet here, I have these nice warm boots. I have a mid-weight layer of merino wool. And then I use Volt Heat. It's a lithium battery sock. And they seem to work really, really well. In fact, this morning, I got up there and when my toes got to be a little bit chilled, I felt a little guilty because I wasn't sure if Dylan had much to keep his feet warm. But uh, not too guilty that I didn't turn those babies on high. And so what's really cool with uh, Volt, I have Volt vests, Volt jackets, Volt uh, um, quarter zips, shirts. But you just take this little thing right here, you turn it on, and you can turn it on low, medium, and high. I can guarantee these things run for hours. So when I'm just gonna sit for four or five hours, I turn it on high. And I enjoyed having warm feet uh, the entire time. So again, you know, and, and even looking at that, I with the Volt, uh, the Volt jacket, vests, um, but especially with my feet, I think these boots would be pretty good. And I know in the past, um, these boots were really great at keeping my feet warm, but with the diabetes, it really helps to have that extra, extra heat down there, and that helps out a lot. A lot of times I'll wear a heated vest when it gets really cold, and uh, it just takes that chill off. You know, you get used to those white tail hunters sitting up in the tree, and sometimes being chilled the entire time, it's kind of cool to have that heat against your back and against your core and actually feel it turn on. But again, head, hands, and feet, the heavy face mask. There's times where I've used even a Gore-Tex cap in the past where I put that over the face mask in, in case of snow or rain. It's really windy and it's wet snow. And sometimes I'll wrap a Gore-Tex gaiter we have first light Gore-Tex gaiters that I've used that I wrap around my hand warmer tube. That knocks down the wind, rain, snow, anything that's going to get in there. The bottom line is though, whether you're using a first light brand or some other type of brand, really critical to use the type of layers. These are the type of layers that have worked for me for sitting in very cold weather going back decades. It's something I developed over a long period of time to keep me warm and comfortable. My loved ones, my friends, warm and comfortable. I wanna make sure everyone's warm when they're out hunting with me. Um, these are some of my favorite clothes from First Light. Make sure you check out their sale through November 28th. Everything is 40% off that's on site right now. That's from the 15th of November to 28th, so I hope you check that out. And we're also hunting during a HuntWise kind of day, HuntCast kind of day. It's very blustery. Again, there's been a 40 degree temperature change from morning to morning, which is just crazy. We ended up seeing four bucks this morning. I'm gonna get back out into the woods, whether it's in Minnesota or Wisconsin this afternoon. 
You can bet I'm going to get out there. Hunt wise is 25% off, 40% off first light. Those are both in the description of this video. You can check those out. And uh, whether you do that or not, whether you buy whatever clothing you are, just make sure follow these tips for these layers from a, from an old uh, bow hunter that's been at it for a long time, sitting in trees, going back to where we didn't even use safety harnesses and belts and it was crazy to even think we made it alive just standing on a branch and freezing back in the day literally standing on a branch we couldn't afford tree stands <laughs> so back that was in my teens in the 80s so but uh we've we've come a long way since then i hope you can stay comfortable enjoy these cold weather hunts this is perfect for getting out and uh and find those mature bucks in their feet. And, and we saw some decent ones this morning, passed, passed a couple, and uh, look forward to trying to find a little bit older one tonight. And I hope you are too this deer hunting season. I urge everyone out there to really check out my web classes. They've been wildly successful. We have one that details how you should design your land, another one that details how you should plant and maintain and manage a food plot program. How can you make those decisions that fit your land specifically and not someone else's? Unfortunately, there's so much information in the hunting industry that says you should do this, but it doesn't apply to you. These web classes directly apply to you. And then we have our third web class that came out last year, rut web class, navigating the entire rut. And then we have our fourth one coming out, which is hunting hills and thermals. I urge you to check those out, try the web classes, and they're all about teaching, helping you understand how you can navigate, not only managing your property, food plots, and the rut, but also hunting, hunting strategically, hills, thermals, and wherever you pursue whitetails for your dream and your passion.